some history. I want this is how the New Testament opens up. Your New Testament Bible opens up with Matthew 1 and 1. And if you read it, like I read it, it says the book of genealogy of Jesus Christ. That's what y'all say, right? The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ. Genealogy, your ancestry. This is the book of history. This is the book of the bloodline. But before we can even get to the whole New Testament, before we can tell you about the new thing about God and what he is doing, Matthew starts off with genealogy. Even though Matthew wasn't even the first New Testament book written, they reorganized it and said, we must first start off with the genealogy of Christ. They did, they did it for a reason, and it says, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Before I can talk to you about Jesus, I got to first tell you that he's the son of David. He's the son of Abraham. All right, uh, 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 what does verse 2 start off with? It, then it goes right to Abraham. So, so he said, before I can tell you about Jesus, you must first understand he's the son of David. But in order for you to find out he's the son of David, you got to realize that he's the son of Abraham. So it starts off and says, well, Abraham begot. It's the old term text talking about these are the children that they had. And, and, and it feels like it is a casual reading of the New Testament and it causes a person to really wonder why would it begin with something so dull and something so boring as a family tree. One, one might conclude that there is a little bit of significance. Maybe it is not even needed that you can draw from a catalog of names, a, a list of people and who their children were. So most Christians would skip the boring part and get to the exciting thing. But this is needed. Tell somebody, say, but this is needed. No, 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 no. Tap, tap somebody, but, 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 but this is needed. See, 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 you got to understand that you have a true ancestry. This is, this is my, in my words, this is my ancestry dot Christ. See, they start with Abraham, so let's do the same. They, they give you this template in Matthew. That's what we'll use to trace where we come from, our ancestry. It says, Abraham was called out. You know Abraham. Abraham was called out. Abraham is a special man of God. He is God found favor in the eyes of Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham and he told him, I will multiply you exceedingly. The blessing upon Abraham's life is God said, I love you so much that I'm going to bless you so much that the children that come from your bloodline, your family and those that are related to you are also going to be exceedingly blessed just because of you. Genesis 17 told us that, that God changed his name from Abram to Abraham because he is the father of many nations. I, I had to change you. God promised him a land. God promised him that I would be the God of you and your descendants. This is who Abraham is. Abraham was special. His people was special. God made a covenant with Abraham. But even though I love me some New Testament, it starts off with Abraham, but there was a man that was before Abraham. There was a man that I know we all are related to. He is considered the, the first man. We call him Adam. Now, 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 let me walk you through Adam. Adam, first man ever created, right? Right? Come on, Adam, the first man ever created. I, I like Abraham, but I got to go back to Adam. Adam, first man ever created. I can draw from Adam better than I can even draw from Abraham. He is my first example of how God wanted us to be. And the Bible says in chapter 2, it says he formed them from the very dust of the ground. And the Bible says he blew the breath of life into him. See, I started smiling, told you I was doing a history lesson. Uh, uh, it blew the breath of 
life. Somebody say breath of life. That's what the Bible says. But the word breath in Hebrew on this one is neshama, which means a puff like a wind. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, when he created him from the dust of the ground, that's why ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The dust that I was created from, I will one day return to that dust. But instead of just leaving him as dust, he blew the very wind or that which is a breath into his body. You, hold on to that. Hold on to that. Somebody say, hold on to that. Matter of fact, clench your fist. You ever need to remember something, so you got to hold a fist or hold your finger. I got to hold on to that. Uh, uh, uh. But it's significant because when they talk about the fall of man in chapter 3, this is where I'm going with it. Uh, the, the Bible says after Adam and Eve had fallen in sin, it said the Lord was walking in the cool of the day. I'm getting excited because I didn't studied it already. Uh, uh, in the Hebrew, it said he was walking in the cool of the day. The word cool in Hebrew in this is too high, which means it resembles wind like a breath. It said when the Lord back in the old days wouldn't roam around the garden, he wasn't walking physically. He was a wind that resembles a breath. So somehow when God moved around from place to place, he was as if a breath of wind. But then earlier when he created me in the beginning, he blew that same wind or himself on the inside of me. That's why it's easy to understand. He said, let us make man in our image. Why? Because I put my very essence inside of him when I created him. Therefore, when I said we will give him dominion over everything in the earth, I have dominion because God is in me. When, when he created Adam himself, it says he blew himself into Adam. That's where you come from. So from Adam, you were given dominion on earth. From Adam, God put his very essence on the inside of you. From Adam, there was the God on the inside of you operating from Adam. Later on, now we run into Abraham. Now gets this other covenant that found favor. So now we got the Abrahamic. We got the, the uh, uh, Adam's covenant with God that because he was... God on the inside of him. Then we got Abraham that has the covenant with God. I will multiply your seed and make you great. And I will do amazing things for you. So the first one is actually called the Enoch. Think of Eden, Ick. Edenic. I know it's word Eden with Ick. Edenic. Covenant. Then we got the Abrahamic covenant. Two covenants with, with God already. Now, let's go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew. We, it, it, it's a fun little history lesson. Uh, uh, back in Matthew, talking about where we came from, who, who I'm is. Uh, uh, the beginning of time, God put his essence inside of me. And it flowed for years all the way to my father Abraham. Now, he had many sons and many sons had father Abraham. And his family now was blessed. And everything that came from Abraham was now blessed. But in Matthew, go to 1 and 5. Go back to 5 because there was some more kids and more kids. But in 5 is another significant one. It says, and Salmon begot Boaz. Yeah. We like, oh, I see. Come on, lady. I, I thought I was going to get some help when we talk about Boaz. Why? Because when Boaz is found in the Bible, he, he, he restored the bloodline that was needed for his family. He linked us to a great man. Boaz had found favor with God, but Boaz had better yet found a good thing. Boaz found himself a wife, and whoever finds a wife finds a, a good thing. Boaz is the one that we like because he had favor from the Lord. And ladies, I know you like this. You're looking for a Boaz. Why? Because not only does he know who God is, but he got some money on his side. And, and he, he, 
got some good stuff in his back pocket. Mo Boaz had knew a knew, new strategy. He knew how to help the girl that he liked. He, he would leave a little extra for her. Why? Because he understood that there was a blessing in that woman of God. There, there's something inside of us brothers that comes from Boaz, a, a strong man. I believe there is a, a marriage covenant found in Boaz just because of in your lineage it says you have the ability to marry somebody that's good for you. You got the ability to marry somebody that will do right by you. You got the ability to find you a godly man. There's somebody out there called Boaz and either he's looking for you or men. You have to become him because him related to you. Boaz is is in your genes, is in your genealogy. You don't have to settle for all the trash. God said, do you know who you come from? You come from men that found women and men that proposed to women and men that set up a wife and men that found favor with God through a wife. There is a covenant of marriage in my Boaz. God in me, whoo. My seed will be blessed. Woo! I can even get married and be blessed. Oh, what type of history is this? God, I love you. We got this in our blood. Men, we have the ability to be men of honor. Go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew. We ought to trace it out. Matthew 1 and 6 said, And Jesse begot David. Let's say, the, the what? David, the, the, the king, and Jesse begot David, the, the king. I, 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 we, we're taking everything from, you're a chosen generation. I, a lot of people chosen. Royal priest, this is where you get your royalty from. The, the, the king, King David, put us on the throne. King David said you had a right to be the king of these things. King David is where that lineage where Peter said that you are a royal priesthood. I know, I know, I know. You don't, you don't feel it at times. Sometimes you forget it, but isn't it amazing? You ever run into somebody and they trace back their roots and the next day then they start walking in with kilts and stuff like that. They say, well, this is part of my family. And, and they relate it. Why? Because when I find out where my family it's from when I find out what my family used to do, I have access to it. This is what my people wear. I can change my wardrobe. Why? This is where we come from. I can go in and go out of it. Why? Because this these my people's and this is your people. This is why I need you to know this. And this, this is where you come from. This is what's so powerful. They trace the bloodline. The Lord promised David that I will give you a dynasty forever in 2 Samuel 1, 7. He said, I will establish my kingdom from your people. Acts said that the Lord gave a testimony about David. He said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Do you realize that from your bloodline, this royalty also had a covenant with God that he, God would establish his kingdom through him? He said, I'll establish my kingdom through you. Even said later on in Acts how the Lord said, this man was after my own heart. There is a heart towards God that resides on the inside of you. You don't know where it came from because you've been probably, you know, you, you, you veered off course every now and then. And sometimes we don't feel like we deserve the greatness of God and the, the, the royalty and the majesty. And God, I'm just but a servant. But if you knew what was in your blood, if, if, if you just knew what you had access through just by who you are, you, you don't even have to work. You realize you don't have to work for your blood. My name is Stephen Bennett Jr. When I was born, there was something in the Bennett legacy that just dropped on inside of me. There's something I have access to, lands and property, just because I was born to the right family. Born in the right family. Born around the right family. There, there's something that is established inside of you. Go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew. Y'all still with me? I ain't put you to sleep yet. We'd be on Bible study on Sunday morning, right? Go, go. Matthew, go, go to 16. Thank you, Mother Cora. It's all right. 
trying to put together the story that this is how Matthew opens up. Don't worry, I read past it all the time too. And God said, read this. I said, no. <laughs> Look, Matthew 1 and 16. So we didn't trace David. I mean, Abraham got to David. Boaz all up in there. And, and now it said, 16, and Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Now this is when the fun begins. I ain't even get, this is the best part right here. This is where my intellect overrides and I have an issue with the Bible. This is when smart people start to stand up and say, hold up, you just trace Adam to Abraham, I'm cool. Abraham to Boaz, I'm all right. You got David in there, cool. Then you just got us all the way to Joseph, the husband of Mary. Hallelujah. So the bloodline is through Joseph. Is that right? Uh, uh, Joseph, the husband of Mary. The kingship, the royalty is in Joseph, right? To be a king is through Joseph. The lineage runs through Joseph. But in December, y'all was telling me Mary had a virgin birth. Y'all remember that? Just a few months ago, you told me, oh, the virgin Mary that knew no man birthed out Christ. But the bloodline is through Joseph. How do we get the blood? You had me, preacher. I traced that bloodline. I was with you. You told me all these exciting things. I was with you. But it, it stops off right here. Or, 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 if Mary got the virgin birth, no man then touched her and she got Jesus, born of the Holy Spirit, but the lineage that we need to relate him through is through his daddy Joseph, that which he has no blood, my issue is how? I said how? But anytime you ask God how, he'll show you scripture in the Bible. Uh, uh, try this one, John 1 and 12. Uh, 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 I'll read it before you even get there. But it said, but as many received him, capital H, which means Jesus, to them he gave the right. Somebody say, I got a right. To become the children of God. To those that believe in his name. Just because you believe in God's name, now you have a right to be called his kids? That can't be right. Go on to 13. Do 13. He said, whom were born not of blood. He said, take your bloodline. Whom were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh. I, I know it's not in your natural way you believe it to be. God is so inconvenient at times. He said, I'll take your bloodline and then still do something different with it. He said, I don't even care if it's not born of your blood, but it is not of the will of man, but God. Somebody say, but God. Ooh. No, 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 no. Go to Romans 8. Romans 8 and 14, Romans 8 and 14, he, he, he was trying to tell me that I don't care about your bloodline anymore. How you, you just trace me through blood to blood. Don't Romans 8 and 14, Romans 8 and 14 said, for as many are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. When I'm led by the spirit, I become the son of God. Uh, I got to keep reading that. That ain't make sense. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of what? Adoption. Jesus Christ and God 
operating the first adoption agency in the history of man. He said, there is a spirit of adoption that now you can just cry, Abba, Father. God can be your father. All you got to do is believe and be led by the spirit of God. He said, the spirit himself will bear witness in your spirit, which means you don't need justification from nobody. There's not a preacher anywhere that says you have the right or not the right to become a son of God. He said, God said, I swear by myself that you can call me daddy for the rest of your life because if your spirit says God is your father, then there's not a man. What the, the word said, eight, 17 said, and if we are children, then we are heirs and heirs of God joint heirs with Christ and if indeed we suffer with him do times ever get tough for you? If you suffer with God, do you realize the Bible says if indeed you suffer with him, you will also be what? Glorified. He said it's not in the blood, but it's covered by the blood. Woo. It ain't in my blood no more, but God covered it with the blood. When, when he sent Jesus, he said, I know there's a bloodline that traces from here to here. But after this point, there is a spirit called adoption. Where if your spirit on the inside of you, which is godly put from the beginning, when it calls back to my name, you now become my son and daughter of Christ. You now bear witness in this thing. Y'all don't believe it yet. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, uh, uh. But, 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 but check this out. Check, check, check this out. Check this out. Try, trying to let you know who your family is. Uh, uh, but he still needed Joseph. He, he used Joseph to get that bloodline. Because he needed to make sure we understood that Christ was king. He came from kings. He came from kings. Because I said, well, well, Joseph could have just been his cousin. I mean, if we just adopting people all of a sudden. <laughs> Since you just go violate all the rules, Jesus, all right, do what you do. I don't even need a man. The Holy Spirit do it. Okay, God. Mess up what I had going on here. Cool, do it. That's why, man, when you walk with this thing called Christ, that's why they said when you suffer with them, suffrage is not just the, the pains of the outside world. Suffering is you trying to walk and understand this crazy walk you got with God, saying, God, I don't see it. How about you just make it appear and I can walk better? And God said, no, nah, baby, but you still getting warm. You doing well. You're like, God, can you just help me out? He said, keep your eyes closed and keep your mind stayed on me. Why? Because you're my son and my children. Children know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. How is it I know God's voice? Why? Because when I was in the belly and in the womb, that spirit, oh, that wind, oh, it was on the inside of me reminding me. Said, I feel like my daddy must be close. Even when they when they abandoned me and they did me wrong, I, I still felt close to my daddy. Even, even when I knew I was being neglected and I wasn't in church all my life, but my daddy still was close. Why? Because when I heard the word of God, something woke up on the inside and said, God, I know you forgive me. God, I know you hear me. Why? Because I'm uh, my father. Check this out. But get back to Joseph. Y'all getting happy for no reason. Hold on. Uh, Joseph. He needed Joseph for the legal. For the legality of it all. See, he was adopted into the logistics of everything to make sure that the state law would adhere. What I mean by that is legally by being adopted by Joseph, now Jesus had a claim to everything that his dad had. When Joseph said, I will be this boy's father, now the lineage continued through the legalistic term of just adoption. When I adopt you, you are now my child. Blood is not needed. 
I got paperwork that proves this. Which means there was no entity that could stop what Jesus was to receive. No outside force could stop it because the paperwork was there. It reminds me how we say there is not a devil in hell that can stop what God has for me. Why? Because I have a legal claim to it right now. Because when you're adopted to the faith, when you're adopted as a child of God, now everything that God ever wanted for me, everything that he ever stored up, every nest egg, every little bit of inheritance, all belongs to me. Why? I got a claim to it. Why? I'm legal in this thing. Not only do you have the spirit of adoption, you got paperwork with your name on it. The Bible is your certificate of authenticity. And I say, you deserve to be the head and not the tail. You deserve everything to be above and not beneath. The Bible is all the paperwork you need to say nothing can stop me. Nothing shouldn't be stride up coming to my life. New jobs show up. Why? Look at my paperwork. Promotion, show up, look at my paperwork. You got family issues, go back to your paperwork. My marriage on the rocks, let me read. Oh, I got somebody that has the blessing of marriage. I got a Boaz in our system. This is a Boaz clause that say that we can restore every single issue that is messed up in my family. I don't even have to get divorced. My marriage will be blessed. My, my children will be blessed under the paperwork of Abraham. That, that's what my paperwork say. That's what, that's what my paperwork say. There's something on the inside of me that's agreeing with that paperwork. That, there's something that is brewing up that says there's nothing that can take it away from me. Uh-uh. I have a legal claim to this thing. You better slap somebody and say, I got paperwork on this stuff. I got paperwork on this. It come in different languages and different translations too. It's called a study Bible. You better sit down and study it. I got paperwork that proves I deserve everything that God has for me. Uh, See, when you check the paperwork, you got to check that paperwork. You got to say, oh, it's a fine print right here. I got some covenants on my side. Oh. God, oh, you feeling good up in here, God. Oh, spirit of the living God. Oh. I, I want you excited, but I got to take you. That ain't even the good part. As the Bible tells us, you got to use your paperwork. In Matthew, as it was telling us that David, uh, 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 the David, the king. That's what it said. His child, he begot from the wife of Uriah, Bathsheba. Hold up, time out. When you read this thing, you be like, hold up, time out. You mean you just traced the bloodline, this holy covenant, hallelujah, Jesus, through all these great people. And then we get to David where we're kings. But the way the blood gets to Jesus is when he took another man's wife and had that man killed. The sin that he did. From, from the sin, the Bible, even, he said, from the wife of Uriah. You, you caught me out even in Matthew, bro. That, that happened back in Samuel. Come on, chill. Shh. That's my Bible scholar. That was a Bible scholar joke. Come on. That happened back then. That's the New Testament. Shh. They put it in bold too. <laughs> Josh, pull that up. I want to make sure they know we won't be making this stuff up. This Bible could get fun. I think that was Matthew 1 and 6. It was all bold print. Like, why are you shh? He said the wife of Uriah. Now check this out. If it's under the wife of Uriah, you mean the sin from David? The sin from David's mistake? God steal? God steal? I got 
God let that sit for somebody because some of you can't get over some of your own mistakes and, and, and you always thinking about when you messed up and when you got it wrong. I, I, I know, I know, I know, but, but, but God still, no, 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 but, but God still, no, not talking about this perfect, beautiful bloodline and we trace it through a sin. God still honored his bloodline. God still blessed them. So God is not giving me an excuse to mess up, but he's telling me if there was just somebody here on today, if, if I just had at least two people that know what it feels like to mess up every now and then, if there, is there anybody here that ever got it wrong? You went left when you were supposed to go right. Is there, is there just one person that, that missed the mark just a little bit? God told you yes and you still said no, but even when you made your mistake, God is still the God of steel. I will still honor your bloodline if you have the spirit of repentance. Why? Because it was covered by the blood still through the sinfulness still through the mess up still through the times that he got it wrong. God honored him. You're part of the family of can't get right. You're part of the family of I, I did it too early and I, I did it too late but but there is a God that still there, there's a God that still honors me. There's a God that still loves me in spite of. I thank God for my ancestry tree. Why? Because God said not only did Abraham come and give me the promise of my seed. Not only did Adam come to give me dominion over this world and put God himself on the inside of me. There was a Boaz that gave me the promise of marriage and happiness there was a David King Jesus there was a David that gave me royalty and said you can now have a heart towards God there was a Joseph that gave me the spirit of adoption that even when my bloodline is messed up all I got to do is believe supernaturally in my spirit that I am a child of the most high. And if you can believe it, child of God, then God said, I will honor it. Then I got Jesus himself that is covering my sins. I think this feels like the way Paul put it. He said, who he predestined. That he also called and who he called he also justified and who he justified. See, sometimes I ain't got to scream the scripture. See, if that Holy Ghost start moving on the inside of you, the scriptures start jumping out, reminding you of your past. And you start realizing maybe God called me to such a time like this. Maybe this is right where I'm supposed to be. Stop crying in your pity. Stop thinking that you done missed the mark and you done missed the train. God said, I'm still the God of steel. Because who I predestined, I call. And if I called you, I will justify you. And if I justify you, I will glorify you. Paul said, what shall we say to all of these things? That if there be a God, Come on, child of God. Somebody stand to their feet right now. Say, if there be a God, that if I'm called, I'm justified. If I'm justified, I will be glorified. And what shall we say to these things? That if God, say if God, if God, if God still, he'll still honor me. That if God be for me, that's what you got to get inside, on the inside of you. Do you know who you come from? Do you know what's residing on the inside of you? The breath of God is on the inside of you. You can speak things out and they will become, you can talk it into existence. I don't say it because it's a story tale. I say it because I got paperwork that proves it. That if God be for me, there's not a devil in hell that can stop me. There's not a demonic attack that can change me. There's not somebody living on my street that can mess this up that's not an outside force that can take it away from me I got paperwork that says if God be for me who somebody say who somebody say who who can be against me I got a claim to this thing I, 
got the claim to be blessed. Thanks for watching with us on today. I ask that you be a giver to the ministry of House of Prayer and Praise. We have different ways to give. On the screen right now, you can text to give by texting H-O-P-P -P give to the number 77977 or even on cash app by using dollar sign H-O-P-P -P church. Our ministry has several different initiatives to be a blessing upon the community and upon others in this world. Getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out and making sure we baptize them and we teach them about God. We have community feedings. We are definitely in the understanding and the agreements that we are blessed to be a blessing. So I ask that you text your gift, you send your gift digitally, and you allow God to be a blessing to this ministry. I thank you as always, and you and your family stay blessed.